Uh, Lexi Capital was founded in 2008, and our goal is to provide uh, an excellent service, the best place to buy, sell, or trade precious metals, uh, you know, on the West Coast here. So uh, how, did, how did you guys get, get into this whole thing? How, how did all this come about for you? Well, uh, amidst the financial crisis, a friend of mine asked me, hey, do you want to come sell gold? And I said, what is that? <laughs> In 2008, I said, um, are you selling jewelry? And he said, no, no, come down and take a look. And um, at, at the time, the price of gold had just fallen from about 1000 to 650 and silver fell from 19 to $9. And wow. um, I had no idea what was going on, and um, I, I happened to get into the market, and and uh, we saw a gold rally from 650 to 1900. Silver went from nine to fifty dollars over the next, you know, three years. So it was a pretty good bull bull market to get into, and and that's where we started. Wow. That's fantastic. We have got uh, Chris Mitchell with us today. He joins us live here in our big broadcast, coast to coast and border to border on iHeartRadio and also AMFM247.com. Tune in, iTunes, and, of course, Radio Loyalty. And um, let, let, let's talk about Bitcoin because uh, you're the CEO of Lexi Capital, founder of Bitcoin Advisor. Uh, you specialize in alternative assets and investments. You founded uh, and sold uh, Searchwire in 20, 2015. Um, talk to me about what happens with digital currency, because I know that uh, there's a lot of folks that are kind of freaked out by, by digital currency because there's uh, a potential for uh, the uh, uh, some of these... Uh, you know, some of these stimulus checks and things to, to possibly be put on a digital currency uh, at a certain point. Um, talk to us about digital currency. I know that it's a uh, big hot topic nowadays. Yeah, a lot of people ask, well, what is Bitcoin? I think uh, it's really important to just know it's just digital money. So it's money you can send around the Internet. As long as you've had a credit card or an online bank account, you've had digital money. However... Bitcoin was fundamentally a computer science breakthrough. It solved a problem that had never been solved before called the double spin, which is if I'm going to send you a digital dollar, how do I prove to you that I didn't send a copy of the same thing to somebody else? Because in the digital world, it's really easy to make copies, things like photos, any kind of digital content. So here's what's important. The only way... That problem was solved today was by trusted intermediaries called banks, right? They sit between us. We trust the banks to automatically debit our account, credit the other person's account every time you swipe your debit card or your credit card or even mail a check. So Bitcoin yeah. came up with this brilliant solution. It allows me to send you a dollar, prove that I didn't send it to anybody else. At the same time, we don't have the intermediaries in the middle taking a fee or slowing things down. So Bitcoin has really created a global version of cash or gold, if you want to call it that. And it allows anybody to transfer value to anybody else seamlessly over the global network and, uh, you know, it, over the Internet, right from your phone. Here's what Bill Gates said, and I really love this. He was being interviewed on Bloomberg, and he said, quote, Bitcoin is better than money, and it can't be stopped. Why? Well, let's say I try and send you that money. You know, let's say I, I'm in my hotel room in Tokyo and I want to send you ten thousand dollars. Yeah. If I try to send you that money with a traditional bank, I've got to go down to the bank, fill out a bunch of forms. Even though I want to send you that money now, it's going to take several days and cost me fifty dollars. He goes yeah. with Bitcoin. I just did it right now, instantly for free. Now, what are and, what are some of the yeah. risks with with Bitcoin? Because you know, well, one of the things that I always <laughs> we always talk about on this show is we always talk about all these hackers and all these morons that are out there that have nothing better to do with their time than to you know create chaos. Um, to me, a digital currency, if I've got like you just said, if you're going to send me ten thousand dollars from from a hotel room in Tokyo, who's to say that doesn't get hit off at the pass and some jerk jerk leg in ohio gets it <laughs> so 
Great question, and I think your point is valid because I do think we are some time away from Bitcoin being onboarded to where everybody can use it and it's easy to use. And I'm saying it's merely a currency of the future. In the short term, I believe there's downside risk in Bitcoin, and unless you know how to monetize that downside risk, it's uh, highly, you know, speculative investment. So you don't want to invest in Bitcoin more than you can afford to lose. Yeah. And really, um, at, at this point, I, you know, I, I, I would say to look at, take a step back. You know, what event investments are available now? Take a step back. At this point in history, Trump was leading us through the strongest U.S. economy in history. And, you know, stronger borders, lower taxes, the economy is doing great, and boom, the coronavirus hits. And that's way out of his control. You're in my control. However, I don't think the coronavirus was the problem. It was just the pin that popped the bubble, and the bubble was all the bad debt. So, you know, I think if you're younger, you'll survive the crash. It's not a zombie apocalypse, but you have to ask yourself, you know, how do I come out of this on the other side? Or... If you look at your time horizon and it's a little shorter, I think you have to ask yourself, can I, what can I do to minimize risk and protect what I've accumulated? So you've got to look at all investments, right? You've got oil, bonds, real estate, stocks, gold, silver, and Bitcoin. And the big story today, you heard it right yesterday, crude oil hit a 70-year low Big volatile problem. I mean, earnings going down, companies like Chevron and Exxon, I don't think it's going to help their share prices. Two, bonds, right? If you look at bond yields, the 10-year yield is at 0.6%. Why are the rates so low? Well, there's a ton of demand right now. The Fed is buying, and we have a global recession. So countries like Italy, Spain, China, right, they're, they're buying U.S. Treasury bonds for safety. Very much so. But when U.S. Treasuries don't act as a hedge against risk, you have to reduce risk in your portfolio and other places. So rates, I think interest rates are going to stay low for a long time because there's a bond glut right now. There's an oil glut, and I think there's a cash glut. Uh, People want to save more now, be more frugal, uh, you know, because of the virus, you know. So that means low inflation in the short term and um, probably going to take several years to get back to full un- uh, full employment. But um, I'll just touch a little bit on real estate and then I'll get into gold and silver real estate. I think likely to take a 20% on the commercial side. That will still into the residential at some point. I think it will come back long term. I'm a big advocate of real estate. I You can't print more of it, right? Um, yes. But here's the big, you know, story, the stock market, and I think the story behind that is the earnings reports, right? They're broadly being revised down. Today, companies like Verizon, AT&T, American Airlines, Heineken, they all revised earnings down. But uh, banks, banks' earnings last week were coming out. Citibank reported $7 billion in credit losses. Why, right? How do people get a loan without a job or pay their bills when the economy is completely frozen? Yes. So jobless claims are at 22 million. And to put those numbers in perspective, the worst monthly jobless claims report during the 2008 financial crisis was 701,000. So we're at 22 million, and the Fed Chairman Powell is projecting unemployment to reach 30 percent. So I, I really don't – I don't know if we understand those numbers, but I, I can tell you uh, big firms like Credit Suisse, Goldman Sachs, along with a few others, their their expectations for the GDP and the corporate profit, they're expected to contract by a third in the second quarter. We so have, if corporate profits and yes. earnings are going down, I mean – and, and the, you might say, well, why are stocks rallying right now off the lows, right? The Dow, the Dow could be back at 30000 by the end of the year. And I, I, I think uh, we all know 
The same thing is happening. The Fed is doing another bailout. They're creating currency yes. out of thin air. Yes. Right? Where do you think all that money comes from? Or where where does it go? <laughs> See, this, th th there's, this, there's, this is the thing, Chris. We have got Chris Mitchell with us today. He joins us live. He's the CEO of Lexi Capital, and he joins us today here on the telephone to uh, discuss uh, investments, uh, Bitcoin, uh, all, all the various things. Um, do you think with with the way that you do you do Bitcoin with Bitcoin advisors, um, do you think that at some point, because of the fact that they keep printing money, essentially, uh, is is it going to have no value and people are going to be forced to go into Bitcoin? That's a great question. I don't think people will be forced into Bitcoin. I think, actually, people will wake up and realize, wow, why am I putting my money down at the bank at 0% interest when, uh, you know, I could have owned some Bitcoin, my own money, had possession of it. I think it's more of a, you know, people naturally will gravitate towards something that is more efficient, right? If it's easier, text, you know, sending money should be as easy as sending a text message, right? Yes. Why should you have to hustle down to the bank at 5 or 6 p.m. and, you know, hustle down and get your wire out before 3 p.m. or something crazy? Oh, I'm going to wait for my check to clear five business days and then you can move your money? No. <laughs> yes. With Bitcoin... It's done now, and I think our children in that generation, are they won't know what paper money is like. It'll be digital currency. But at this point, to bring up the money printing, that's what I was, was getting out to, is the bailout. Yes. The Fed, where does all the money go, right? There, there's $12 trillion on the way. They're buying assets like mortgage back securities and corporate bonds. And this is what I think is really interesting. The Fed is taking ownership of these companies away from the public, which I think is criminal. It's communist and yeah. uh, because we end up paying the principal and the interest on the debt in the future. And so I would suggest all this debt right now is, is a bomb exploding right in front of us. People don't see it. And it's just, you know, frankly, I think it's because they're not educated. They were not taught in school about finance. Uh, our education system is frankly broke. And, um, again, the stories are, are coming out right now that the banks are taking a huge hit because of the credit losses and their loan loss provisions, right? When they look at the loan loss provisions, the amount of cash on hand the banks have, to make up for these people who can't pay their loans, right, the bank reserves are way, way too small. Yes. So the government is stepping in right now, filling in the gap with your money right now. That's where the bailout comes from, right, because the more they print, the less your dollars are worth, right? Yes. So that's, that's why I think, you know, taking some action right now is critical, the stocks just rallied. This might be, you know, your last chance to kind of diversify before stocks retest the lows. Think about it. With all the uncertainty ahead, the volatility in the market is crazy. Why the stock market would be going up when the unemployment is skyrocketing and the negative financial impact of the virus is expected to be very high. That's anyone's guess. Yes. I just can't think of how the stock market continues to do this long term, right? With all this money printing around the world, I'd expect metals like gold and silver catch on as people realize this financial impact is going to be long term. And when the lockdown ends, you don't just reopen an entire business back up. Everyone, right? How do you open up a casino back with thousands of workers, some of whom are not going to return, yeah. Some are going to have some issues, but people want, you know, they're going to still want to distance themselves, social gatherings, you know, restaurants, getting on planes, et cetera. That's going to be very, very slow to come back. So, well, again, that's you, why we're you, recommending. You, you bring up something uh, a few moments ago that, that I, would, I would love to have you expand on. Um, one of the things that 
you know, I just get so damn frustrated about is the fact that we live in 2020. We live in, you know, we've got all this technology, you know, I'm, we're, we're having this conversation on a, on a high speed, you know, high speed internet. We're, 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 we're chatting on phones. We're recording this with computers, you know, all these different things. Um, this whole thing with you brought up the money situation earlier about how why should I wait five days to be able to pull my money, all these things out. Shouldn't yeah. have all this stuff with money, shouldn't have this gone out years ago? I, I, I always kind of compare it to, uh, you know, the cable company uh, calling me up and saying, we'll be there anytime between eight and five. I'm like, we have cell phones now. <laughs> You don't need yeah. to. You can tell me when you're going to be there. <laughs> and it's the same thing with this this money situation. Break this down for me. How how technology and everything should should work with all this. Well, it it's pretty simple and and that's where you know the technology is going um you know blockchain technology is you know kind of the bluetooth or the Internet of Things of the future when it comes to sending money. And the, the fact is, Bitcoin can be used to do a, a whole lot more um, than just sending money. And that's why you've got guys like Tim Draper. I don't know if you've heard of Tim Draper before. Yes. Yes, we have. Yes. You know, I mean, often we regard one of the most successful guys, venture capitalists in the world, uh, you know, Invested in things like Skype, Tesla, Twitter, DocuSign, Coinbase. I mean, guy's a billionaire, right, out of uh, yes. Silicon Valley. So he just said in an interview, and this is a direct quote, he goes, $250,000 Bitcoin price projection by 2022 is his conservative projection. So I I, I think here's what, he, here's what he said, though, is Bitcoin's now the eighth largest currency in the world. It's accepted everywhere without any government friction or interference it's a store of value solution that doesn't require a holder to keep a room full of gold or metals or art it's a frictionless currency it can move automatically based on a contract and there's no drag that comes from regulations and accounting rules hey my favorite part about bitcoin there's a fixed supply there's 21 million coins it can never increase so if you own one um power to you i think um it's something as a a diversification again i don't uh, i want to tell people i'm not a financial advisor i don't give financial advice um, but i think bitcoin is used as a more speculative investment in the hopes that hey you know a very very small percentage like one or two percent of your portfolio is in there yeah and um it goes really high hey you, you cash out after you triple or quadruple your money and then uh, look for another opportunity. We have got a great guest with us today. He joins us live here on the telephone. Chris Mitchell is with us from Lexi Capital. He's the CEO. He's also the founder of Bitcoin Advisor. He specializes in alternative assets investments. He founded and sold Searchwire in 2015. And uh, so talk to us about that. Uh, you, you, you founded and you sold a company. Take us through all the steps with this. Well, um, coming from a real estate family background, I had been, uh, I had my license from a very young age and, uh, I was recruited to work for a company called realtor.com and, uh, being a very successful, uh, salesperson for them, I helped, uh, develop some of their top performing lead generation systems because I worked very closely with the marketing department and top producing realtors across the country. And uh, we came up with a marketing system that uh, enabled agents to, you know, get a lot of leads and be very successful. Yes. Um, so what happened is I had an idea and I left Realtor.com, started my own company because 98% of new home buyers were starting their search from their phone before they went on their computer, and so we used, utilized a mobile application um, to generate 
uh, buyer and seller leads for realtors and lenders, and uh, thing exploded overnight. It was a very fun, uh, you know, exciting time. Awesome, awesome. So uh, once once you once you sell, you know, you you found a company, you 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 sell the company. Uh, what do you do next? Well, that's why I'm doing what I'm passionate about that I've been doing since 2008 because, you know, where there's a great crisis, there's going to be a great opportunity. And, yes. you know, I think this is absolutely one of the big, big, biggest disasters the world has ever seen, but it's also going to be one of the biggest opportunities. And if you're in the right place, I think you can really come out of this shining. You know, you, you, you won't be smelling like smoke. And the, sm- the stock market, that's where I'm trying to um, take a look at, because I think a lot of people think, hey, the market's just going to have a V-shaped recovery. And um, when unemployment at 22 million projected to go higher, earnings reports just starting to come out, I don't think it looks pretty. I mean, I I really don't. And, and again, there's two primary reasons I believe everybody should have diversification into silver and gold. Okay. Yes. And it's not for your portfolio, but really, it's to protect your net worth at the end of the day. And the first reason you protect against significant volatility in the stock market and in the bond market. And that, that's where the tremendous problems they're brewing right now inside the high yield corporate bond market so that's that's one reason but the main reason for owning physical metals and this is the reason i own metals personally it's to protect against a significant decline in the value of the u.s dollar i see the dollar being devalued declining between 30 and 70 percent of its value over the next five plus years period so if you don't have a significant percentage i'm not talking about your portfolio now i'm talking about your net worth in physical metals to hedge against the loss in purchasing power in a falling dollar, uh, it's going to be an awfully bumpy road ahead, I think, for most people going forward. So hopefully that, hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. Hopefully that makes some sense for people going forward. We have got a uh, great guest with us today. He joins us live here in our broadcast. And uh, I guess before we let you go, my friend, uh, how, do, how do we... Uh, how do we find you online and uh, get involved with what you guys are doing over there? Feel free to uh, go to LexiCapital.com, get your free investor kit, or call. You can call 800-473-1213, and we'd be happy to get you out a complete precious metals investor guide. Uh, we also offer precious metals IRA that are backed with physical gold or silver. Well, I appreciate it, sir. 